Welcome friends, this is Prof G, and in this video we'll make our Wi-Fi connected Raspberry Pis accessible to our Macs just as if they were attached like a flash drive. Now even though you might have put an SD card into your Mac when you set up your Raspberry Pi on Wi-Fi, you can't put the card configured for a Pi back into the Mac and access the Pi's file system. That's because the file system used in the Mac and the file system used in the Pi's SD card aren't compatible. But fear not, if your Pi and your Mac are both on the same Wi-Fi network, then you can add the Netatalk application to the Pi so that it shows up in the network section of your Finder. And once you do that, you'll be able to drag and drop files between your Pi and your Mac. And another big advantage, especially for us CircuitPython programmers, is you can save files directly from within applications like Moo to your Raspberry Pi. This is super handy to do. It's really easy to set up. Here's how to do it. And as usual, we have a step-by-step -step tutorial document for you where you can copy and paste commands to avoid typos. You'll find this document at bit.ly slash pi dash in dash finder all lowercase. Now this tutorial assumes your Pi is on your local network and that's the same network that your Mac is connected to. If you need to learn how to set up your Pi in a Wi-Fi network, there's another tutorial linked right here, but we'll assume that your Pi is powered up, booted, connected to your network, and you're ready to go. So we'll launch the terminal in Spotlight by pressing Command Spacebar, typing the word Terminal in, pressing Return, Terminal launches, I'll make the screen bigger with Shift Command Plus a few times, and then we'll log into our Pi with SSH Pi at your host name. In this example, I'm gonna to connect to meal mascaris which is the host name that I used for the Pi and the Mask Distributing Robot Project. Then add dot local to the end, press return, approve any questions that you might get during login, type in your Pi's password, and when you're at the prompt, we're ready to go. Now, even though I'm starting at a Pi named Meal Mascaris, later on in the video, you're gonna see me switch to a Pi named Built with Prof G. Now, back in the browser, if you scroll down in the instructions doc, you'll see that the command we need to install Netatalk is sudo app-get install Netatalk. So I'm gonna copy this line, head back to terminal, paste it into the prompt and press return. The installation starts, you'll see a bunch of text scroll by, and on my fairly fast Wi-Fi network and the Pi Zero W that I'm using, this took about three minutes. Now let's return to the instructions in our browser. Now recently a bit of additional security has been added to the Netatalk program. So we need to get into our afp.conf file. That file was just added as part of the Netatalk installation that we just did. And we need to uncomment two lines and make one additional modification to a line. So to do that, we're gonna copy this line here. That's gonna bring up the afp.conf file in Nano. So with this copied, we'll head back to terminal, paste that in, press return. Now we're in Nano and the afp.conf file is up and ready for editing. And the the semicolons that you see in here act as comments. So what we're gonna do is use the arrow keys to move in front of the line that starts with homes in square brackets, and then we'll press the delete key twice to remove the semicolon and the space that's just in front of this line. And then we'll do the same thing for the line below this, getting rid of the semicolon and the space. And on this very line, you also see at the end, there are four X's. So we're gonna use the arrow keys to go to the end of this line, then delete those X's, and we're gonna replace those X's with the word a home all in lower case and that's it. So now we can press control X to get out of nano. We'll press return when asked if we want to save our work and we're back at the prompt. Now let's head back to our instructions doc in the browser and there's one more command that we need to enter to restart Netatalk so that it picks up the changes that we just made. And that's this line here, sudo system control restart Netatalk. So highlight that, copy it, return to the terminal, paste it in, press return, and we're done. So from this point forward, every time you turn on this Raspberry Pi and it connects to the network, it should be visible in the Mac file system. Now some users might run into a bit of a snag, especially my students working on the Boston College network. So if what I'm about to show you doesn't work yet on your computer, hang in there, I'll show you a fix in a minute. So let's try it out. I'm gonna first minimize my terminal window and minimize my browser. Then back in the Finder, I'm gonna open a new Finder window with Command N. And now over here in the left-hand pane, you'll see that you'll be able to scroll down into the location section and find a network icon. Now normally you can click here and see any devices that are recognized on your Mac network. It looks like Meal Mascaris is already connected, but I'm gonna click on network just to see. And here we see all sorts of devices that are connected to the Mac file system. We see that we've got TalkPy in here. That's another project that you'll find on my YouTube channel. And here's Meal Mascaris. Now I'm gonna click on Meal Mascaris and I see that it's not connected. But up here in the upper right hand corner, there's a connect as button. So I'm going to click on that. Now the name and password fields that show up here want inputs for Meal Mascaris on the Raspberry Pi. So these aren't the inputs for your Mac, but instead I'm going to put in Pi as the username and the password is going to be the Meal Mascaris password. Press connect. 
and we can see we've connected to the Pi and the Pi's home folder shows up. Now here's a bit of a detour. If you were patiently waiting because your Pi didn't show up on your network, here's what you need to do. And by the way, these instructions are also in our follow along document at bit.ly slash pi dash in dash finder. The section with the steps I'm about to give is named connecting to Pi using Finder if you're on the Boston College network, but that will also work for anybody at home that still can't connect. So just head to the Finder and press Command K. You can also get to this window by going under the Go menu and selecting Connect to Server, and this should bring up the Connect to Server dialog box. Then enter AFP colon slash slash and your Pi's host name. If you're at Boston College, don't enter .local at the end. But if you're working from home or another network, you probably do need to enter .local after your host name. Then click Connect, and you'll see a message stating you're attempting to connect to your Pi, and click the Connect button. Then you're going to log into your Pi now, so you're going to enter Pi as your username, and the Pi's password as your password. And you can click Remember in Keychain if you'd like, and then click the Connect button and that should open a new Finder window. You see here the host name is now mounted to the locations on the left hand side. Mine is called Built with Prof G, and I'm gonna click that volume. And in the upper right hand corner, you see that there's a disconnect button to disconnect from the Pi. It'll change to connect if you ever get disconnected while you're logged in. It shows a directory called Pi's Home. The actual name of this folder on my Raspberry Pi is Pi. It's technically the user folder for the user Pi that I just logged in as. So if you see Pi's home, it's just the same as the Pi folder you might see when you explore your Pi. And so now if I click and go inside of Pi's home, I can see all of the folders and files that are inside of my Pi. Look at that. So remember, if you can't connect right away, just press Command K from the Finder or use the Finder's Go menu and select Connect to Server, and that should let you log into your Pi. Now I'm going to show you one more jump cut. I started recording this video from my office, but I finished the recording at home, but I do want to show you this. First, to show you the convenience of this Netatalk stuff, I've downloaded the drum sounds folder that you can find in bit.ly slash circuitpython school files. That's just a Google Drive with a bunch of files that we use in our tutorial videos. Now this folder's on my Mac desktop, and if I double click on it, you can see all of the WAV files in this folder. Now, we don't need this folder for our tutorial, but just to show you how convenient our setup is after Netatalk is installed, I can click and drag this folder, I can drop it into my Pi's folder, and we see it's copied over, and now all of those files in the folder are on my Pi. And just to verify this, I can go into my terminal program, and if I use the ls command, that's a command that will list out all the files and folders in a directory, I can see now 12 underscore drum underscore sounds is in here. That's the folder I just copied over. And let's use the terminal command to take a look at what's inside of this folder. So the terminal command to change directories is cd followed by the directory name or folder that I want to go and visit. So I'm going to enter cd space 12. And now I'm going to show you another pro tip. If there are no other files or folders that start with the characters that I just typed, then when I press tab, the rest of the name is filled in. So it fills in automatically the rest of 12 drum sounds. Cool. That saves you some typing and hopefully prevents some typos. Then I'm going to press return, and we see the prompt has changed to show a slash and 12 drum sounds. That indicates that we're in this directory. And so let's perform an ls in here. And that lists the contents of this folder. And we see, just like in the folder that we copied from the desktop, all those WAV files are in there. Nice. And by the way, the terminal command to go back up to the previous directory is just cd for change directory, space, followed by two periods. Now, in addition to copying files, another big advantage to getting your Pi to behave like a hard drive is that you can save files directly to your Pi from within applications. And this is very useful for my students who have been writing their CircuitPython programs using the Moo editor. Here's a Python program created on my Mac, but now I'm going to save this. I'll navigate over to the Built with Prof G volume. That's my Raspberry Pi on the same local network. I'm going to go into the main Pi folder, save this. And then when I open the terminal, I can execute this program by typing Python and the name of the file I just saved, press return, and the results run on the Pi, print to the terminal window, nice. So I hope you come away from this with big learning. We learned to set up our Raspberry Pi to use Netatalk. We learned to connect to server and use AFP in case the connection didn't work the first time. We learned Linux terminal commands, including ls, cd, and cd dot dot. We learned to use tab to complete typing while in the terminal. We learned to execute Python programs from the Pi terminal. And our Raspberry Pi now acts as a hard drive when it's connected to the Mac, allowing us to copy files by dragging and dropping, and to save to the Pi from within any application. I really hope you found this useful, and if you did, post a comment and let me know. Drop a like, that would really help me out. Consider subscribing, and stay tuned, because there's more goodness to come.